What was the Vanze Conference? Why was it held? And who attended it? Let's find out in today's episode of the History Chronicles. Today's History Chronicle begins at a specific place on a specific day. The place was the villa of Amgros and Vanze, located at numbers 56 to 58 in the Berlin suburb of Vanze. The date was the 20th of January 1942. Here in the course of a small conference, which lasted little more than 90 minutes, a number of the most senior members of the SS, the Nazi paramilitary organisation in charge of running the concentration camps across Europe, related to several senior German officials details of the new Nazi policy towards the Jewish population of Europe. The policy was known as the Final Solution, and the implementation of it in the three years that followed resulted in the Holocaust and genocide of Europe's Jews. The Fanzé Conference must be viewed within the context of the Nazi regime's wider approach to the Jewish population of Germany in the 1930s, and then the wider Central and Eastern Europe as the Third Reich expanded in the late 1930s and early 1940s. Hitler and the senior figures within the Nazi party were rabidly anti-Semitic, their views being that the Jewish people were responsible for a vast array of the ills of Europe and the world, and the diminished place of Germany amongst the European powers following the First World War. These anti-Semitic tropes and beliefs varied from the paranoid to the downright delusional, but were profoundly dangerous. Once they seized power in Germany in 1933, the Nazis began acting on their anti-Semitic beliefs, but their actions would get incrementally worse over time. In the mid-1930s, they began disenfranchising the Jews of Germany in a series of legislative acts known collectively today as the Nuremberg Laws. These stripped German Jews of their citizenship and also imposed considerable restrictions on their role in society and the German economy. There were also regular acts of violence committed against German Jews during this period, culminating in the Kristallnacht, or Night of the Broken Glass, on the 9th of November 1938, when thousands of German businesses and synagogues were attacked, and hundreds of Jewish people were killed across the country. Things deteriorated further once the Second World War commenced in September 1939. Most of the kingdoms of Western Europe had expelled their Jewish populations during the late Middle Ages, and as a consequence, the overwhelming majority of European Jews had moved to Eastern Europe, particularly to Poland, where the number of Ashkenazic Jews was very high. Once that country was occupied in the autumn of 1939, the German occupation government began forcing large numbers of Polish Jews into ghettos in large cities such as Warsaw. Others still were being forced into labour or concentration camps, which were proliferating throughout Central and Eastern Europe. During the course of 1940 and 1941, Nazi policy tended to favour the idea of removing the Jewish people from Europe by pressuring or forcing them into leaving for other regions, such as the Middle East. There was even a bizarre plan to transplant millions of Europe's Jews to the East African island of Madagascar, being looked into by the Nazi regime at this time. But it was abandoned once it became clear that the Suez Canal in Egypt would not be soon acquired from the British. Instead, during the course of 1941, a new, more dreadful policy was being decided upon by Hitler's government. It would be called the Final Solution, and the Vanze Conference was central to it being implemented across Nazi Europe. The Final Solution was essentially a resolution to engage in the genocide of Europe's Jews. The continent's Jewish people would be rounded up and sent on trains to the many concentration camps which had been erected, in Poland in particular. There, some small proportion would be used as slave labour, but the vast majority would be immediately sent on arrival to extermination centres, where they would be gassed to death using chemicals such as prussic acid or Zyklon B. Their bodies would then be cremated on site. By this means, the Nazi regime would eradicate the Jews of Europe during the course of the war. It is clear that this strategy had been decided upon by Hitler and other leading figures by the summer of 1941. The Vanze Conference is now regarded as one of the most pivotal events in the rolling out of the final solution across Nazi-occupied Europe. It was not the beginning of it, though. Already, as early as September 1941, an experiment in using prussic acid or Zyklon B to gas individuals to death had been carried out at Camp 2, or the Birkenau Camp at Auschwitz, and plans were already underway to develop a series of death camps at locations such as Auschwitz, Treblinka and Sobibor. In this way, over the next several years, Europe's Jewish population would be wiped out. The significance of the meeting at Vanze was that having determined on this course of action, 
news and details of it needed to be conveyed to some of the most senior Nazi and SS officials. The conference was organised and overseen by three key individuals. The first was Reinhard Heydrich, the chief of the Reich Security Main Office, the purpose of which was to oversee the fight against all perceived enemies of the Nazi Reich. Heydrich was once referred to as the Man with the Iron Heart by Hitler himself, and was central to the early implementation of the Final Solution. He was aided in running the conference by Adolf Eichmann, a senior Reich Security Main Office official who was responsible for moving the Jewish people on trains to the death camps during the Holocaust, and Heinrich Müller, the chief of the Nazi secret police known as the Gestapo. Details of a proposed meeting at Wannsee on the 9th of December 1941 were sent out to the officials involved by Heydrich on the 29th of November. However, on the 7th of December, two days before the intended conference, the Empire of Japan attacked the United States in Hawaii and other places such as the Philippines. The entry of the US into the Second World War necessitated a major meeting of Germany's wartime leaders, many of them being invitees to the Wannsee conference. The Wannsee meeting was, accordingly, cancelled as the German government entered into diplomatic moves resulted in its own declaration of war on the United States on the 11th of December 1941. The meeting at Wannsee was, consequently, rescheduled for the 20th of January 1942. It was a small gathering. Other than Heydrich, Eichmann and Müller, there were just 12 others, but these included the senior secretaries and officials of several of the main Reich ministries. For instance, Joseph Bula was the state secretary for the general government of occupied Poland. Wilhelm Stuckart was the state secretary for the Ministry of the Interior. Martin Luther was the undersecretary of the Reich Foreign Ministry. These were not major decision makers themselves, but they were very senior bureaucrats who oversaw the workings of government departments with hundreds of officials. The conference was opened by Heydrich who provided an account or summary of the Nazi regime's approach towards the Jewish population of Germany and Europe all the way back to its rise to power in 1933. He then proceeded to relate the details of a memo which had been prepared by Eichmann in advance of the conference. This reported that there were roughly 11 million Jews living across Europe, whom nearly half were living in areas which either formed part of the Reich or were occupied, or were client states such as the Netherlands and occupied France. The bulk, however, were in Poland, where it was estimated nearly two and a half million Jews resided. Heydrich then proceeded to relate what had been decided months earlier by Hitler, Himmler, and other senior members of the regime. The Jewish population throughout German-controlled lands and those of its allies would be gathered together and sent to the concentration camps throughout Europe. In the end, Heydrich spoke for about an hour, and then there was a half hour of questions from the officials who had been invited to Wannsee. The minutes of the meeting, which were discovered in 1947, point towards a clique of bureaucrats asking questions as though they were discussing a routine administrative exercise. What, for instance, should be done with Jewish people who are part of a mixed-race marriage? Should these be dissolved on a compulsory basis, or could sterilisation be employed to ensure that there were no offspring from such a marriage? wondered Otto Hoffmann, the head of the SS Race and Settlement Main Office. What was perhaps most chilling about the Wannsee Conference was that after the Q&A ended, the gathered officials drank some cognac and engaged in further discussion about the new dispensation, seemingly treating it as an administrative exercise which they were anxious to get on with doing effectively. Years later, Eichmann, who took the minutes of the meeting, related how he had recorded what was said somewhat differently to how the conversation actually played out, as the figures involved spoke in a rather conversational fashion about methods of mass murder. He claimed to have been surprised that the new policy met with such acceptance as he had expected some limited resistance. Historians have long debated what the significance of the Wannsee Conference was. When details of it first emerged in the late 1940s, it was viewed as pivotal to the rolling out of the final solution. Subsequent interpretations have noted that nothing new was actually decided upon at Wannsee, and that in fact the final solution was already underway at several death camps by January 1942. As such, the significance of the Wannsee conference was in bringing on board the administrative machinery of several government departments within the Reich to make the implementation of the final solution more efficient. In this sense, it doubtlessly increased the scale of death which occurred over the next three years. 
The results of the final solution and the Vanze conference are well known. Over the next three years, approximately six million of Europe's Jews were mass murdered at Nazi death camps across Europe. Over one million people alone were killed at Auschwitz-Birkenau in Western Poland, while hundreds of thousands were killed at other major camps such as Treblinka and Sobibor. The officials who attended the Vanze conference were central to this. Eichmann oversaw the trains, Müller tracked down Jews who were in hiding, Bühler oversaw the administration of much of the Holocaust in Poland, while Rudolf Langer was effectively in charge of overseeing the final solution in the Baltic States region. Not all of those who attended the Vanze conference faced prosecution after the war. Heydrich was assassinated just four months after the meeting by Czech resistance fighters near Prague. Müller disappeared in 1945 and is generally assumed to have been killed or to have committed suicide in the summer of 1945. Langer was either killed by the Red Army or committed suicide when the city of Poznan was seized by the Russians in February 1945. Thus, several of those who attended the Vanze conference didn't survive to appear in a courtroom. Of those who did face prosecution, several escaped rather lightly. Eichmann fled to South America after the war and lived there until the early 1960s, at which time he was finally captured and executed after a trial in Israel. But several others, such as Gerhard Kopfler and Alfred Mayer, were either released after the war for lack of evidence or served short prison sentences. In the case of Georgi Liebrandt, an undersecretary for the occupied Eastern Territories, he was deemed to have acted on his conscience when he resigned his position in 1943. Thus, although the Vanze Conference was central to the Holocaust, many of those who attended the meeting largely escaped punishment afterwards. You have been watching the History Chronicles. We'd love to know what you think of the Vanze Conference. Please let us know below, and if you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Also, if you'd like to support our work going forward, please visit our Patreon page. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of the History Chronicles.